This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Helping you find emotional, spiritual, and physical balance. What does your future hold? It's time to find out with Psychic Susanna. You certainly are in the right place at the right time. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. You know, you hear us every Sunday night at 730. This show, Life with Psychic Susanna, is all about empowering you and helping you go into your tomorrows a little stronger, a little safer. We're going to be taking your calls. The numbers are one 800 543-1110 543-1110 and 558-1110. I, we had company in the studio. Uh, Jim, is this correct? We had another producer in the studio. Yeah, we had Dennis Kronika. Yeah, and I here. put his picture up. Yeah, very on nice. the Facebook with the numbers to call, mm-hmm. but I couldn't take your picture because you would not let me take your <laughs> pictures because you have an owie. Yeah, let me just say this. Proud of it, let know. me just say this. You take a week off and you come back, you look like, you know, you've been run over yeah, by a freight train. Maybe you shouldn't ever leave me on Sunday night. Uh, that might be Maybe the that's the whole After thought. what I went through, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, what I expect you here every Sunday night now right. <laughs> because I can't see you banged up anymore. Yeah. But you'll see Dennis and his family that are from out of town on the Facebook. Please join us on Facebook. Life with Psychic Susanna gives you the inside scoop of who's in the studio. Um, Susanna Stickney on Facebook and Twitter. You find out what's going on in my life. You find out, you get pictures of the studio, and you got Dennis today, and you got Joy, who's our, going to be our, our person today that we're going to be talking to. By the way, Jim, just between you and me. Yeah, just the two of us. Do you know how big of a thing this is being on KFAB? It's huge. Do you know why it's so darn huge? Gosh, there's so too many reasons. Or, Our uh, Gary Saddlemeyer yeah. was on America's Countdown. America's Countdown. Gary was. Gary, Gary Saddlemeyer. Yeah. And he said, okay. KFAB, they wanted his opinion. And then. Oh, the talk radio countdown was. That's okay. right. Okay. And then Crash was okay. on. Awesome. So actually, you just keep your your. Uh, dial to 1110. You have all the news and weather and sports you need before they get it on the national shows. We are ahead of the game here, so stay tuned. Now, if you're a fan of mine on Susanna Stickney on Facebook and Susanna Stickney on Twitter and Life with Psychic Susanna, you have had a mailing that talks about who our first guest is. I am speaking with Joy Huber with Cancer with Joy. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And in the background, we're hearing a song that you co-wrote it mm-hmm. called Bright, Bright Side Effects. Yes, that is correct. The idea behind this is merging the side effects of cancer treatment, the negative side effects you go through, Hair loss being one of the biggest examples most women and men can relate to with my philosophy of looking on the bright side. And that's really what Cancer with Joy is all about, is I often say no one's happy they have cancer, but you can have cancer and still be happy. So how do you look on the bright side and find those bright side effects and the song that we're playing uh, talks to you about that. Well, you know, it's it's not it's not so much people who and and we just had a a, a gentleman who died of cancer this uh, today. Who was it, Jim? Pop quiz. Was it Arlen Specter? Yes, okay. he just died of cancer. It's not about the dying. It really isn't about the dying. I believe before we choose life, Joy, we choose our life lessons. And we mm. choose our life purpose. Yes. Okay. After looking at this book, after reading this book, after seeing your enthusiasm, by the way, who I first heard on Dr. Luke's show. And so you might want to, after we're done, go to Dr. Luke and look it up. Um, but cancer, how do you live with cancer? What First, tell me your first thought when the doctor said to you at eight, what age? 
I was age 33 when I received my cancer diagnosis. And I'll tell you, not just cancer, but stage four, advanced, late stage cancer, got that diagnosis as a young adult. At 33? Yes. So when you, you know... When we have the show on Saturday morning, Cancer with Dr. Luke, you just don't want to hear the word. Absolutely. You hear the word and you just, I wet my pants, to be honest. I mean, it's just a bad word. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the first thing I felt was fear, this paralyzing fear of death and dying. You know, when you hear cancer and like said, stage four, you think, how soon how bad is it going to be? You know, I braced myself for a doctor to tell me I only had so much time left, so many months. Where were you when you heard the word cancer brought to you? Well, were you was, at home or in the I office? was in the doctor's office. Uh, it was Friday, March 12th, 2010. Funny how we'll never forget that right. date. And uh, I had seen a doctor regarding a bulge in my neck, a lump. And it just wasn't symmetrical on one side, uh, this lump on the other side. And we ran a CT scan, got a stat read on that. And the next time I saw the doctor, he said, well, best case scenario, you have a very bad throat infection. And he said, I'll put you on the strongest antibiotic I have two times a day for the next week to see if we can make some impact there. And he said, worst case scenario, I need to mention the word cancer to you or lymphoma. And I can still hear that pitch in my voice, how I said, cancer? Right. You know, the cancer? Yeah. Me? You know, not at age 33. Life was just beginning. Right. And, and, and the word, again, brings the, the fear and everything. How did you move past the fear? And what would you say to a person, you know, who hears that word for the first time? Oh, great question. You know, because I pretty quickly realized that it's not what happens to you in life. You know, we all have life events that happen that are good, and then we all mm -hmm. have events that happen that are bad. But it's not necessarily the event in life. It's really your response. It's and the action. And that's what bet. dictates the outcome. You know, how do some people get a cancer diagnosis, and they choose one response, and their outcome is different than others who get a cancer diagnosis, they decide to draw the shades, become withdrawn from friends and family and society, curl up in a ball, throw themselves a pity party, and they're having a different outcome. So I pretty quickly recognized that really at its simplest, and we'll get a lot more into it here in the next couple segments, but facing cancer with joy, literally and figuratively, is a choice. It's a choice that you choose to make. And I pretty quickly was able to make that choice and say, hey, I have cancer, but cancer doesn't have me. You know, I'm going so to fight this. So you didn't let it own you. Exactly. You took charge of the word. Exactly. And in the book, I've got one whole chapter on cancer and your relationships, how a diagnosis and treatment impacts not only your professional relationships as you go about your career, but your personal relationships. And thanks to a good friend uh, who works at Facebook, we were right. able to go back and harvest my status updates from right when I got that diagnosis. And I looked in the very first update, before I even thought about cancer with joy, I was talking about my strategy being laughter and humor through the many tears that would fall and that was when I was just a newly diagnosed patient you know there's a doctor uh, I, who's written a book of living and loving and he talks about how humor how humor can actually help heal you Absolutely. You know, I believe in mind over matter. And I speak to a lot of groups. In fact, this Tuesday night, I'll be down in Beatrice, Nebraska, speaking. I get asked to speak at so many hospitals and cancer right. treatment centers and churches. Because you're enthusiastic. I mean, when I heard you on Dr. Luke, I was saying, wait a minute, that word's not scary now. Let me bring her in. Oh, well, thank you. No, no, yes. no. Truly, it, yeah. you took the fear out of it because you took Action. Right. And that's what people say. They call me and they say, we want to bring joy literally and figuratively to our hospital, to our infusion center. And so I do go out and speak with a lot of people. And, you know, I always ask them, I say, how many of you think it hurts 
to have this positive attitude and face cancer with joy. And people start shaking their head and go, well, no, it, it probably doesn't hurt you. And I go, any of you think it helps me to be looking for the bright side effects as I go through treatment? How many of you think? And the hands just go up in the air and they say, oh, absolutely. You know, again, mind over matter. Mind over matter. That's that. That's what we talk about here. But let's let's talk. You've heard the word cancer. Yeah. You were going to take a little break, and then once you heard the word, tell me what your plan of action and for our listeners. Now the book gives you a lot of uh, places you can go and gives you a, a way to manage the whole thing. But when we get back after this commercial, I want you to tell us. I heard the word. Now what do I do? Okay. Right. Okay. We'll be right back. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB, the only place you need to be on Sunday night at 730. In the background, you're hearing Bright Side Effects, which is on YouTube, YouTube, iTunes. And on iTunes, iTunes for download. Uh, on iTunes, available to download. It is a thought. It is a process. You, when you look with joy, you receive the joy. It was co-written by Joy called Bright Side Effects. We'll be right back. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. She knew I was going to say that. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. The background music that we're going to be playing for this show is called Bright Side Effects. It's from, uh, you can get it on iTunes. It's written about joy. And it's talking about having to have the bright side of life when you're hit with the word cancer. Please join me on Facebook. Susanna Stickney on Facebook and Twitter. You're going to find out who's what I'm doing, who's the guests. And what we're talking about, if you're on Life with Psychic Susanna, I put additional female uh, information there on what is available and what we talked about the night before. I'm going to be starting a blog soon because we had our, our uh, guy telling us we need to do a blog. Then we're going to be taking your calls. The number is 1-800-543-1110 or 558-1110. I'm talking to Joy Huber who at 33 was told she had cancer. Uh, cancer with joy, she was actually told stage four. That would even be scarier when you heard that. But now, I've Joy Huber, I've been told I have cancer, or my family member has. By the way, I want everyone to know that Parenthood, which is a TV show that's on TV, is dealing with the mother of a newborn baby who was just told she had breast cancer. It's a wonderful life, and you watch the family. It's a wonderful show. Anyway, we're going with Cancer with Joy. Tell us, Joy, I've been given, my, my sister's been said she has cancer. First of all, as a family member, what's the best way to approach people like that? Yeah, absolutely. I hear from a lot of friends and family members, and they commonly say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what well, to do. Well, we don't want to so. make it worse. We don't want to bring it up. We, right. You know, there's almost like, is it better to be silent about it, or is it... No, so I say so. I definitely have several tips that I can share. A lot of great information to help people when you hear of their diagnosis. Number one, you definitely do want to acknowledge the news. You know, mm -hmm. you can't ignore it. It's this huge, life-changing event that your loved one is going through. So let that person know that you're there for them. But this is a huge tip. When you contact them, you know, whether you reach out via email or if you call them and you get their voicemail, tell them they can get back to you on their own time. Because when I first got diagnosed, of course, I put it on Facebook, the comments, the private messages, the voicemails, the text messages all felt a little overwhelming, to be honest with way. you. Mm -hmm. I was a full-time cancer patient, all of a sudden going to all these appointments, consultations with doctors and tests and surgical procedures, getting ready for chemo. So if you tell them they can get back to you on their own time, you understand there's a lot going on. I think that's a great thing to so say. So being patient with them Absolutely. until they can emotionally. Yeah. 
comprehend. He, yes, but it's so important that you go ahead and reach out and tell them you're there for them so they know you're in their corner and you'll be there for them through that journey. Now, when you do talk to them, people go, what should I say? So I address that. Uh, when you do talk to them, try not to ask a million questions. That's really overwhelming. And you might be asking them questions to things that they haven't even thought about yet. And that okay. could freak them out further. So here's what I recommend that people love. What if you just said, hey, Joy, I understand you've just been diagnosed with cancer. You know, I'm a friend. I'm here for you. And I can be a pretty good listener. You know, I'll listen to whatever you want to share. Mm -hmm. And then just be quiet. I always teach people in my seminars that listen unscrambled spells silent. Those same six letters, listen, you unscramble, spell silence. So wow. if you say, okay. that's very powerful. If you say, I can be a pretty good listener, I'm open to whatever you want to share, and then just let them talk, and they'll go into as much or as little detail as they're prepared to divulge. Here's another big tip. I've got a whole bunch of great stuff for well, you, Susanna. Well, it's in the book. I yes. swear to God, this book was easy to read. Oh, thank you. And every page had something that led me to the next page, and I didn't want to stop reading it. It was very helpful. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. So, thank uh, you. you know, I suggest everyone who has anyone with cancer get the book. Yes. But the research. I love the research. All right, go ahead. Finish yes. what you well, were Yes, well, what saying. I was going to say is a lot of people will would tell me about someone they knew who had cancer and try not to go there because they would tell me about someone they knew who had my kind of cancer and then they'd say, but they died. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. why yeah. are you telling, telling me, me this? this? <laughs> right. You know, what am I supposed to say? And then people would do the other extreme. They would tell me about someone they knew who had my kind of cancer who was just fine, you know, kind of dismissing all these emotions I'm feeling, everything I'm thinking. And so the key is not to dismiss. Right, exactly. The key is to listen. Yes, the key, the is, key to is to listen by being silent. And I'll tell you a final tip here. Uh, one of the best tips I tell people is you can do two things. Number one, be consistent and offer ongoing support. So I always tell people check in consistently, number one, but briefly, number two. You know, you don't want to call the person once, ask a whole bunch of questions, never to be heard from again. Right. So check in briefly. You don't want to tire that well, person even out. as you said, don't ask questions. Yeah, maybe don't, don't ask, ask a whole questions. bunch of questions. Should I tell them what I'm going through, like how I can get my dog to sit or come? or Sure, that would be fine. You know, because that's one thing I Taking felt. them out emotionally out of their drama. Yep, exactly. So giving them my drama of my Mickey not coming to me you know to me I was like what's going on in your life because you know cancer was part of my life granted it was it's, a huge part of my life but it, I didn't want it to be the whole you didn't conversation want it to consume yes so when I would meet friends at Barnes and Noble in the cafe or they would take me to lunch you know I would love to tell them what was happening with me but then say what's going on with you yeah and I wanted to hear about their husband irritating them or their dog or whatever the case not may coming. be when I call him, you know, that's a whole issue. You know, we need to do that. Is it time for a break or can I keep going? We could probably squeeze in a break. What do you think, Susanna? Okay, let's squeeze a break. We'll come back. We're with Joy Huber. She wrote the book Cancer with Joy. Um, she's going to come back and tell us what we'll find in the book, which is really, uh, um, really interesting. She even has the 12 do's and don'ts. At diagnosis. I mean, really, let's get prepared with foreknowledge. If you have someone with cancer, check out the book, Cancer with Joy. Uh, we have Joy Huber in the studio. We're coming back and we're going to be talking to you. This is Life with Psychic Susanna on 1110 KFAB. Yes, this is Life with Psychic Susanna. Please join us every Sunday night at 7.30. This is the show that will take you into the future a little bit more empowered, giving you ideas that might help you or your family members. Join us every Sunday night at 7.30. Join us on Facebook, Susanna Stickney on Facebook and Twitter. Life with Su Psychic Susanna. Tomorrow I'll put the contact information up with uh, Joy Huber up on the Life with Psychic Susanna 
contact. But Susanna Stickney on Facebook and Twitter. That's where you find us, KFAB, the only station you need to know. We hear it before it goes national. Heard Gary and uh, our wonderful uh, afternoon guy, Crash, on uh, the total, what was that show called? Talk Radio Countdown, I think. That's talk, a cool talk, show. Talk like Radio. And he was on like seven minutes. Really? Yeah. Good I segment. Te- Good long and segment. I, I texted him and said, I know you, Gary. Am I important now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you it's pretty cool when your boss is made known nationally. But this is the station that gives you the information before they get it in the world. You stay tuned to KFAB. Today... Um, I heard this woman um, a couple, maybe two months ago, on Dr. Luke's show on Cancer uh, Insights. I got to tell you, I didn't like the show. I didn't like the show because it had the word cancer in it. And when you first hear the word, you you just want to close down. You want to close down. And then I heard Joy Huber, and I got to tell you, her enthusiasm, her embracing of what life has handed her and taking it into the future just thrilled the crap out of me. So I brought jo- Joy Huber here so you could hear her enthusiasm for life even when she was told she had stage 4 cancer. Take it away, uh, Joy. What do we need to know about your book? What will we find?